Okay, well, we're back with the Gala Theory, episode four, and not live and direct this time. We are remote in Winter Haven and in Bradenton separately, but I do have Howard Geller on the line. Welcome back, Howard. Hey, thanks for having me again, Jonathan. It's good to have you uh, in the house last week. If you haven't checked out that episode, you're going to want to take a look. Got a couple of good clips of him uh, helping the students uh, prep for the uh, ELDT test. Also, I caught him playing with trucks. Today's topic is vehicle systems and reporting malfunctions. All right, let's get right into it. But before we jump into that topic, I heard you've been on the road. Oh, my gosh, Jonathan, I've been so busy. I started my journey in Niceville with a brand new school at the uh, college up there. What a great group of people. And that was the first, were you with the first class that came in? I I actually set off the first class and we kicked off uh, Fleet Force Truck Driving School at our new location in Niceville. I was there the entire week. Right on. So you were in Niceville, and then you said three weeks out of the month. So where were you the other two? I then went to Bradenton. I love going to Bradenton because I'm I'm, I'm kind of where everybody else is for once. You know what I mean? Right, right. Uh, and then I went over to Venice, and I saw Michelle Roberts down there. I actually uh, stepped away from my role as a theory instructor there, and I did uh, road training all week with some students. Okay, so you were you were actually out on the track. Right. I, yeah, I was out on the track teaching maneuvers, and I was actually road training with them as well. So that's actually kind of a good lead-in because they were talking about you know vehicle systems. If I sat in your classroom, what's the first thing I need to know about vehicle systems? Where do I even start to think about that? Brakes of the truck and transmission and stuff like that. Brake tests that go with the brakes, the low system air tests and the the, the pressurizing tests and making sure that there's no leaks in the in the brake system. And that's those brake tests you were just talking about. That's all, com- that point all comes together in the pre-trip inspection portion of the test, right? Correct. The brake system check, they have a portion of the pre-trip, which is going to be in-cab safety inspection, in-cab inspection of the truck, brake tug tests, and then what they call the LAB, the leaks, alarms, and button test. Uh, The leaks, alarms, and button test has to be done perfectly or they can be disqualified from the test. What would classify it as perfect? They go ahead and make sure that the truck is built up to the amount of pressure where the governor is gonna cut out. That's a 120 to 140 PSI when the governor cuts out. When it's full, that extra air that's in those air tanks will extinguish into the atmosphere give it that sound that we always hear right at that point they're okay to shut the truck off they go ahead and turn it one click to the right it puts on the electricity in the truck now they're ready to go ahead and put their foot on the brake pedal let the needle settle and then find out if they have any leaks they're going to set a timer for one minute I always say maybe a minute and five seconds. They go ahead and put their keep their foot on the brake and they shouldn't lose any more than four pounds of pressure in one minute. If they do, they're going to hear it and they're going to see it on the primary and secondary air gauges. If they don't, that test is complete. You move to the low pressure air test. They go ahead and fan the brakes. Take a full air tank down to about halfway. When they get to 55 or above, they're going to see a warning light and alarm come on. When the warning light and alarm comes on, they know they've drained half the tank. Okay, that's telling you there's low pressure. At that point, you're waiting for emergency buttons to pop on. So what you're going to do is you're going to fan the brakes some more, completely drain the tanks, and those air buttons are going to pop out. That would be the way that your lab test is perfect. Now, what about a malfunction? That's the other half of the topic today. So if you discover during that test that it is not working perfectly and there is some kind of a problem or a malfunction with the brake system, where do you go from there? At that point in time, if you're in a testing situation, at that point in time, you would let the examiner know, hey, you know what, the the governor's not cutting out. Hey, you know what, it didn't hold four pounds of pressure. We lost actually, you know, 12 pounds of pressure. I hear a leak going on. Um, We're not gonna be able to complete this test or where do you want me to go from here? What happens when you're on the road? Let's say you're halfway to your destination and you're pulling freight. 
and you discover I have a system malfunction. What? How does the training then come into play? You would you would absolutely pull over to a safe location. Right, that's going to be the first thing. Second thing is you're going to find out what the problem is. Are is your brake system not holding air? Are you uh, have you lost a line? Whatever the scenario may be, you need a safe place to pull over to discover what the deficiency is. And it doesn't have to be brakes. It can be a bad tire. It can be a bad suspension. There could be several things that can always go wrong. That's why a good free trip is where you need to be before you take the truck out. Hence the word pre-tripping. When a defect or deficiency is discovered out on the road, we have what they call a DVIR or a driver vehicle inspection report. At that point in time, you'd pull out the DVIR, you'd note what the deficiency is, you'd call your safety department, you'd let them know, hey, you're having this problem. You'd call your dispatch, saying, so, look, I need road rescue. I'm not gonna be able to get this tire fixed on my own. Now, what happens when you're sitting by the side of the road? It's gonna start eating up that clock of your on-duty not driving time where remember you had three hours in your day to get your deliveries done, get your fuel done. Now that's going to start cutting into your drive time. So if you have to be towed in, you can just scrap that day because you have that delay time getting picked up, getting towed, going back to the yard, getting another truck, hooking that trailer up to another truck, pre-tripping the new truck, and then going back out to do the delivery. So we've talked about the systems and performance systems check. We've talked about a malfunction, what it is and what you do. But now in between those two things, there's maintenance, right? How much maintenance is on the driver? The driver as an over the road truck driver, he's going to be responsible for the whole unit. He's not going to be responsible to fix it himself and come out of his own pocket, but he is going to be responsible to make sure that there's oil to make sure that there's air in the tires, to make sure the tires have good tread depth, to make sure that there's fluids in the truck, to make sure that there's no leaks, to make sure that everything is nice and tight, to make sure that there's hub oil in the seal. They have to know that they can't just ride on a bad tire. If that tire does not have in the steer tire 430 seconds of tread depth, they're running on borrowed time. So it's not a matter of if they'll get a blowout, it's a matter of when. Now, if there's a blowout, what typically happens from a driver's perspective? It doesn't sound like it's your best day. It's not your best day, especially depending on what tire it is. Um, if it's a steer tire, probably going to be in worse shape than if it's a drive tire or a trailer tire. Uh, the steer tire, you're going to have to react to it. Um, the counter steering is not where you want to be. You want to steer right with it. Just kind of get your foot onto the brake and let it kind of happen. If it's a drive tire, you'll be able to control the vehicle much more. Steer tire, not so much, but you don't want to fight it. You want it to kind of go where it's going to go so that you can stop it under control. If you start to counter steer on it, you could roll the vehicle. So you don't want that to happen. Drive tire blowout or a trailer blowout, you're pretty much going to be able to get it off to the side of the road and put your four ways on, go ahead and put out your reflective triangles, get your safety department, get your dispatch involved, and get road rescue on the way to get a new tire put on. So you can see why it's important to uh, prevent yourself from having one of those bad days by getting into the classroom with Howard Geller, learning how to properly conduct a pre-trip inspection, getting out onto the track, checking the systems in real time so you can have practical application of the classroom, and then knowing how to respond to a malfunction properly, whether that is through the communication you learn with your dispatch and the proper way of doing that, or whether it is live on the side of the road, figuring out how to get out of a bad situation. So heed the call. You're on borrowed time if you're in trouble, so you better get in the classroom today before you sit down behind the wheel. Howard Geller, always a pleasure talking to you. I think we have uh, almost worked our way through that ELDT curriculum. So we've got about one more episode left in that direction. And stay tuned because I think we're gonna get that episode another live and direct spot, this time in Howard's Element, Winter Haven. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for having me, Jonathan.